Hi, Joe Delamater here with the law firm of Razumich and Delamater. I'm going to take a little bit of time today to talk about search warrants. Now, before I do so, I just want to remind you that if you click the link below, you'll be directed to our website where you can learn more about this topic and a variety of other topics from papers and books that we have available for download. So what is a search warrant? Well, a search warrant is a written piece of paper that gives law enforcement the ability to search you or your car or your house, really anything that might have information that they want. The reason they need a warrant is because we have this whole concept called the right to privacy. Now, whether you're in Indiana or any other state, the United States Constitution protects you under the Fourth Amendment of being free from unreasonable search and seizure from the government, right? There's also the Indiana Constitution, which affords a different level of protection and a different level of analysis as to whether that protection uh, has been violated under Article 1, Section 11. So the whole concept is because we want to assume that people have their rights to privacy, we're not going to give law enforcement the ability to breach that right unless they have a good reason to do so, unless they have probable cause. And in a search warrant, every police officer is going to be required to attach a probable cause affidavit. The information in that probable cause affidavit is going to have to be recent. It's going to have to be uh, specific, specific enough to show what they think is wrong and it'll have to be reasonably related to what information they want. So if they, are, uh, if they have suspicion through maybe ob observations that they think you might be involved in drug dealing, they're not going to be able to turn around and request something in their warrant or take something in their warrant that is not reasonably related to drug dealing. Now, those uh, search warrants, the specificity of the actual written document that they have are very important because if they mess up anything on those documents, then the fruits of that search, so in other words, what they took, are excludable potentially at court. Now there's also exceptions to the warrant requirement, things that they can do, things that they can take without the necessity of that search warrant. Now let's touch briefly on some of those. So you've got also excuse me, you've, you've got some of the big ones that jump right out, which are the plain smell and plain view doctrine. Law enforcement officers, they're trained, right? They have this training and experience to detect maybe the odor of marijuana. Maybe they have training and experience to see, to know what bags of heroin look like. When it comes to evaluating what an officer sees with their own eyes or smells, they're able to rely on that training and experience in determining whether they think what they're looking at or what they're smelling is potentially indicative of criminal activity. A lot of people know the odor of marijuana, right? And especially as in more and more states, as marijuana becomes recreationally legalized, it's a more and more common smell. Well, if an officer smells the odor of marijuana when he walks by your car, guess what? He gets to search that car. If an officer walks by and uh, sees a gun inside your car, that may or may not give them the right to search that car because having a gun by itself is not necessarily indicative of committing a crime. But if the officer sees what they believe is a bag of um, marijuana or a bag of heroin sitting right there, that is going to be reasonable suspicion and probable cause to allow them to go ahead and open that car door or to go into your house if they smell the odor coming from there and do these things without the necessity of a search warrant. There's also the concept of maybe you get stopped for something benign, like you had a, a suspended license, but they tow your car because they're not going to allow you to drive away with that vehicle when you have a suspended license. Well, if they do that and they search your car when they put the, before they put the car into the inventory yard, then they'll be able to see, oh, you have these illegal items in the car. As long as they've done that tow pursuant to appropriate standards and they've done the inventory search uh, according to appropriate standards, it is perfectly possible for that information to be immiscible and used against you in a court of law. And then there's uh, the concept that's near and dear to so many defense attorneys' hearts, and that's a Terry search or a Terry pat, which comes from a United States Supreme Court case where the defendant's name was Terry, in which reasonable suspicion that criminal activity was afoot led directly to an officer being able to pat somebody down and search them for weapons. If there's officer safety concerns, if there is a variety of factors that that officer has that reasonable suspicion to believe that some kind of crime is happening right then and there at that time, then they've got a darn good shot at being able to search you or being able to pat you down 
and anything that's a fruit of that search or that patch, so in other words, whatever they find, it may fully be admissible in court. All these little things that I've just discussed, it's a case-by-case -case analysis where what happens specifically in your case is so very important. And that's why you need to sit down with an attorney who's trained in all of these different areas. At Rosen, Mitch, and Delamater, we are. I am a former prosecuting attorney in major felony drug courts and in lower felony drug courts. I've been to the trainings that the police officers have been to. My partner's been doing criminal defense in the area of search and seizure for years. Together, we make a team that is able to give the analysis that your case needs to ensure that if your evidence is excludable, we'll find that way. We're Razumich and Delamater, we're lawyers ready to fight, and we want to fight for you.